Hi guys, welcome to Bank Analyst University. With this video, I will start a new chapter of Bank Analyst U dedicated to the API side of the platform. We have talked about various Bank Analyst services. In fact, we covered them all from the perspective of the services built into the platform. We discussed various packaging formats of Bank Analyst, but the biggest part of Bank Analyst is the API itself. And with this video, I will start preparation. It's going to be a very short step setting up your development environment and once you have it configured then we will be drilling down into the APIs and discuss how they work and what you can do with it. So uh, today I will cover setting up your development environment for Android, JavaScript and iOS projects. It's going to be very straightforward because setting up environment is rather straightforward with backendless so uh, it's going to be a relatively short video. I also would like to say that we received a bunch of uh, pretty cool backhandless stickers and uh, if you would like to get them uh, it's very easy to do. Uh, just uh, post a Twitter message, something on Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever the social media, say something cool about the backhandless, say something about backhandless, uh, then let us know and uh, let us give us your mailing address and we'll sure, uh, surely put it uh, in the mail for you and you'll have uh, 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 stickers to put in your laptop or share with your friends and uh, do whatever you please. Uh, but for now I'm going to jump to my laptop and we'll start exploring setting up development environment. I will start with Android and for this I use Android Studio. You could have an existing project or you will uh, create a new project as I'm doing right now. Just uh, fill out all the required information. Now the project is created. We will not be doing any coding today. Uh, from the configuration perspective, uh, what needs to be done is to bring the backendless uh, library into the scope of the project. And for this I will go to project settings, select the module and then select dependencies. And here I'm going to add a dependency for backendless. Here it is. The latest one is 3.0.20.1. I will select this. Or if there is a greater version number, make sure to select that. And at this point, backendless is added uh, as a dependency. You can verify it just by uh, importing a backendless class. And as you can see, it uh, doesn't report in years, uh, so the class uh, is recognized and thus backendless can be used within this project. So in the future video, we'll start exploring the APIs and uh, using this project as the foundation for all our future work. I'm going to switch to iOS, and for this I'm going to open Xcode and create a brand new project there. To set up an Xcode uh, project, we're going to create this project first and close it and then use CocoaPods to import backendless pod uh, and perform all the setup in there. So right now we'll just use a single view application. And select Swift. We need to select the root directory. We'll say my basic iOS project. Okay, so the project has been created, but now we need to close this project. The next step is to create uh, a pod file. So for this, I'm going to open, um, as I did, uh, the terminal window and change uh, the current directory to the project directory. And here, the pod file can be created by running the pod init command. All right, so the project has been, the pod file has been created. So now we need to open the pod file and add the backendless dependency. So here's the pod file. Let's open it for editing. And add here pod 
by Canvas. Save the file and return to the terminal window. And in the terminal window, we need to run the command pod install. When you run pod install, it downloads all the dependencies and creates the workspace. So now we see that there is a workspace created and that's the workspace that you would need to open with Xcode. So now that uh, the project is open, it includes the backendless um, dependency and uh, the project is ready to start developing a backendless powered application. And in the future videos, I'll be showing you how to use the APIs using this very project. So this covers Android and iOS. And let me also show how to do project configuration for JavaScript. For JavaScript application, I will use IntelliJ IDEA. And I will create a super basic uh, static web project. The name I'm going to give it is going to be my basic JS project. So the project is there, and the next step is to bring the JavaScript library into the scope of this project. For this, I will uh, go to the terminal, which is built right into IntelliJ IDEA, and I will uh, I'm already in the root of this project, and I will need to run npm init. So the name is going to be my basic JS project. It must be all lowercase, except all the defaults for everything else. So now we have package.json created right here. And uh, we need to bring the backendless dependency into the project and for this the command is npm install backhandless s so now we have the backhandless dependency and uh, updating package.json we see that backhandless is now a dependency i will also create very basic js and uh, html files just to demonstrate how to configure and set up backendless dependency within your script file. So I'm going to create index.js and also index.html. In index.html I'm going to reference first of all the backendless dependency and it's going to be sitting inside of the node modules backendless libs backendless.js and second of all I will need to reference index.js which was created right here so this index.js this is the bare minimum setup. At this point any code that would be included into index.js can include backendless API calls. In fact, this is going to be the first call the, that we will do. And uh, in here we're posting application ID and secret key, but I will not be doing that because today we're focusing just on the development environment setup. And at this point, the development environment is configured to include backendless dependency into your GS project. And with that, I complete the environment setup. Uh, as you can see, it is very, very easy to configure your Android, iOS, and JavaScript environments. And uh, this is a, a required step for all the future videos where you will be working with the backendless APIs. Stay tuned. Thank you.